Hello, and welcome to another Optolec Enhanced Vision product demonstration. Now today we're going to go back in time a little bit and sort of reintroduce you to one of our most popular machines that we've we ever manufactured, which is our Traveller HD. This is a, a tablet sized machine. It is a 13.3 tilting screen built-in stand and it has a magnification levels goes from 2.4 to 30 times uh, zoom magnification it weighs just under two kilograms and as with all, all our electronic portable semi-portable devices it has a rechargeable uh, lithium-ion battery which usually gives it uh, around a, a life of around three hours before it needs to be recharged. What differs uh, from the Traveller to our more recent Compact 10 is, unlike the Compact 10 being a t mostly a touchscreen, this relies on large tactile buttons. So again, as with most of our products, it's about giving choices to, to clients. For those who do like the uh, functionality of a touch screen, uh, then obviously we've got options for that. And for people who want tactile, easy controls, no messing, no fussing, then the Traveller certainly fills, uh, fills that gap. I've got to say it's probably one of our most popular devices and has been from, from day one. And it's uh, it's always uh, you can always tell when a product goes down well in the market because since the release of the Traveller, which is probably certainly three years since we released it, there's been many many more competitors copying the copying the design and the effect. But the Traveller has uh, stayed at the forefront of that, probably because of its its price point, its screen size, and its ease of use. Probably 12, 15 months maybe a little bit more than that we we added benefits to the uh, machine by creating a writing stand and a reading stand which i will show you uh, in a little bit more detail but nothing earth shattering in in uh, just a very very simple idea for people wanting to put large books underneath the machine or to be able to write underneath the machine we have two stands available for it which are perfectly designed for the, the, the Traveller HD. So as you would expect from any magnifier, I'm just going to adjust the, the light setting there so we can see it a little bit better. As you can see from, uh, from any of our magnifiers the HD screen has, the, has a camera and the light LED lights directly shining down from that side. There is two ways to turn the machine on. The large blue circular buttons on either side. When you press both of those in together, the folding standing legs collapse upwards, leave making the machine flat. I won't do it just now because it'll turn the machine off. And that will also, in, in the opposite way, when, when you want to turn, turn the machine on, you also press both the left right and the right side button, press them both in at the same together, the legs will fall down, allowing you to click them into position, and at the same time, it will turn the machine on. It is based on a, a unique roller system, so it's quite a heavyweight roller to facilitate moving it up and down left and right on whatever reading material that you wish. I often refer to it as a, as a rolling pin and if you imagine using a rolling pin in that sort of style then you wouldn't go far wrong with the, the ease of use of, of effectively moving the machine up and down and left and right because also built into the roller is the left and right angle for the screen. What that effectively means is if you do have a a, a tabloid newspaper if you were to put the machine down the center of the newspaper with the left and right capabilities of the machine you pretty much get the whole whole newspaper within the within the realms of the of the of the screen so it is quite useful in that ref in that fact so it is a auto focusing camera 
and as I said it will go up to 30 times magnification. As with all our magnifiers you do have options to change the colours. You can have up to uh, 16 different uh, colour settings. The usual black, white, white and black, uh, yellow and black, blue and yellow. You name it you can pretty much uh, have it on there. And obviously natural colour for looking at colour photographs and anything to do with your, your hands, especially if you're using the writing stand, maybe doing some needlework or, or painting or stuff like that, then clearly you would have it set to natural colours and hopefully you can just see, see my fingers tapping away uh, underneath there in natural colour, as opposed to high contrast where it looks more like a negative. So in, in as a video magnifier, you, you won't be surprised to, to, to hear that uh, it, it, it basically does the same as, as the rest of them does. The whole concept of the tablet initially when we brought it out was for individuals who love the idea of a desktop machine but simply didn't have room for it uh, in their homes for, for whatever reason. So we created the traveller to, to be that initial stopgap between a, a, a smaller 5-7 inch portable tablet to the larger desktop ones. So because of its portability it means that yes you can use it in the study in the same way, uh, you can use it in the kitchen, you can use it in the living room or bedroom, or you can collapse it, take it away in the carry case that you get with it. It's a nice uh, padded case so it's sturdy. And obviously in the case start it just looks like a laptop so there'll be no problem taking that away on holiday taking it down to the local library to use in library settings anything like that it wouldn't look out of place hence the name the traveler so with a built-in light source and 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 contrast uh, etc that you you would expect from a video magnifier it does give a very very high clear picture the rotary rubberized zoom ring, basically where I'm tapping my hand on this one, I can saw it slightly closer up there. That's intentionally left as an analog switch to give much more precise control. So by turning it clockwise you increase the magnification by turning it anti-clockwise you are decreasing the magnification but you can micro adjust it and with it being rubberized both on the front and the back of the machine so you're not just turning it from the front you have full control between your uh, finger and thumb uh, you can really get it accurately to how, uh, however you wish the orange button above it is a secondary power button and a lot of people ask as well, didn't you just say that by pressing both the, the buttons on the side, turn the machine on and off, why would you need a second on off switch? Well, again, thinking ahead of the game, when we decided there to, to, to incorporate that, because this is uh, a rechargeable unit and it's not plugged in at the moment, so hence it's run off its battery. Like all machines, if you leave the machine for 10, 15, 20 minutes or so without touching it, it will turn itself off and go into standby basically. Obviously what that means, if we didn't have that secondary power button, you would have to press these two blue buttons in at the same time to collapse the reading stand. And then of course you'd have to press them both in again to release it to, to put the reading stand back into its place, which kind of is long and laborious. So why not just have a basically a power button that you press and hold, which turns the machine off. It basically means you can leave the machine in its full assembled state when you come back to it. If you've if you've been in a kitchen or you've uh, you've uh, somebody's been at the door or on the phone and you've come back to the machine and it's off, it's much easier just to press and hold the orange power button. The machine will turn on. The light comes on at the back and certainly within 10 seconds the machine will come back on and with most as with all our video magnifiers it will come back on at the magnification and the contrast setting you had before you turned it off so you're not having to worry about resetting it up there we go it's gone back to white on a black background at roughly i think that's roughly about 15 16 times magnification 
Beneath the power button and the magnification control, there's a white button with a raised tactile circle on there, and that is the camera freeze frame. Because again, it is a camera system, so why wouldn't you have the capability to, to take a photograph? So you simply press it once, and the image now is frozen. So I'm obviously moving it back and cross, but the image is staying exactly where it is. If I press it again, the image goes back to being a live image. You can store up to, I believe, roughly a thousand images uh, on the machine if you, if you need to. In fairness, most people don't use it at that feature, but it is there, and like most things, it's nice to know. The only other buttons on the other side of the machine, on this side, is another three buttons. The largest button in the middle is your contrast button. So again, by pressing that down, we are simply switching from the high contrasts. Natural colour, black and white, white and black, yellow and black, and in this case, purple and black, because uh, I remember the last person that I showed this to asked to see in this uh, quite unusual colour scheme, but again, it's uh, as with all things with low vision, it's up to the individual, so we can certainly change that. It goes without saying that you don't have to have four high contrast colours. If you just want natural colour and black and white, then you, we can simply configure the machine to have natural colour and black and white. And what that would mean is obviously you are only pressing the machine button once, twice at the most, to get back to where you were. If you were pressing it, if you had natural colour, black and white, then you would just press it once and it would be automatically in the colour of your, your preferred colour, I should say. Underneath the high contrast button, there is a reading line button. So again, if I press and hold that in, a reading line now appears on the screen. That is currently set at its lower portion, but we can change that and set that into the middle or the higher side of the machine if you want a reading line on there. Again, it's a very much personal preference, but the option is there. And to get rid of the reading line, you simply press the bottom button again once and it disappears. The only other button on the machine, the top button, which is the menu button. Most people, again, don't normally go into this because the menu button is something that our our guys on the road, when we're doing home demonstrations, etc., normally configure for the individual before they leave. But for those who, uh, and for the purposes of this presentation, I will very quickly go through the menu button. So once again, you press and hold the button down for a couple of seconds. It shows up the information, first of all, being battery level, which currently states it's at 60%. Regarding the battery, I did say it's got a, re a three hour rechargeable battery. It does flash and beep when the battery is getting low, so you do get that audio and visual representation for battery low. By flicking through the, the left side buttons, which is the, the high contrast and the uh, reading line button, they can be used to flick through the screens. So by using the bottom key, we can now view or delete images. As I said, you can store up archive up to a thousand images if need be. Press it again, we can change the brightness setting. It goes from five to one. It's currently set at three. Most people are happy with that, but again, it can be changed if need be. And, and all you would do there would click on the middle button. Arrows appear up and down, and you're using the bottom buttons to adjust the magnification. When you're happy with the magnification set, you press the middle button again and it, it stays at whatever brightness setting that you wanted. Power options, again, things like standby, switch it from never to five minutes, power on, power off. And also, Sounds, again the beep that happens when you turn it on and turn it off, the battery indication level, you can have that on or off if, if you don't, or again, it's totally up to you. The uh, built-in light you can also turn off, so at the moment obviously we have a built-in light source. If you wish you can turn that light source on and off, 
again, it is totally up to the individual. Personally, never had anybody who, who, would, who would ever need to do it that way. But again, there's no harm in having that as, a, as an option. And the colour settings, again, we can default black on white, white on black, etc. So we'll change actually this one because this is the purple on black, which uh, is very rare to use. But if I want to change that to black on yellow, I just select it, press OK. Use the white button on the right hand side of the machine to come out of that screen, to come out of it again. So now we still have natural colour, we still have black on white, white on black, yellow on black, but now we have black on yellow instead. So it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's very, very simple to use in that respect. So as I mentioned just a, a little while ago, you do have writing and reading stands. The writing, uh, the reading stand is simply placed directly underneath the machine. It does line up with the holes and the hole and the uh, circle on the on either side of the. You set that up on there, and now you've got a a much higher surface area, which effectively means that you can put a much bigger book underneath there. Uh, Especially books which have got large ring binders and things like that, which would be problematic for the rolling settings, then you've got a stand to, to help with that. And as I mentioned, for people who have really big books, or more so want to be able to write underneath the machine, then again we have the option, quite simply, to put a taller stand underneath there so now we've got a much higher i'll just switch it back to natural color now we've got a much higher surface to write underneath if need be if you have a pen and do work on that side obviously you don't need to use the roller because it's fixed in place but the design of the abs uh, plastic stand is that it still very very smoothly moves up and down and you still have the full functionality of being able to move it left or right. So the writing and reading stand is an optional extra uh, on the machine, but it's uh, it's uh, again it's it's down to the individual whether that is going to be an option. Clearly, if you just want it purely for reading, then you don't need the stands. And there's really no. No learning curve with the stand. It's uh, it, it fits onto it in in the same way as any sort of stand. So I'll just look, bring the magnification down and on that one. There we go. And again, it'll snap back into focus. Uh, I will say with the reading and writing stand, because you are lifting the camera from its normal optimum height setting that it does take roughly another second for the camera to go in focus when you're using either the reading or the writing stand. Just something to know, uh, I've seen it a, a lot of times, people say, oh, it doesn't seem to be reacting as quickly as it does when it's flat on the reading surface. It's down to the camera. It will snap into focus, but it just takes an extra second to, to do that. So, so again, this is our Traveller HD. Very, very compact, lightweight uh, design. For, for home use and for out and about. And there we are, just fold it up now and it's turned off. Put it in this little bag. And there you go. The price of the machine is currently at £1,195 plus VAT. Obviously people who are registered sight impaired don't need to pay the VAT. It does come with our usual 14 day money back guarantee which uh, is standard on all our products. Uh, so if you would like any further information on the, uh, on the machine it's always available on our website 
or on our free phone telephone number and the uh, information uh, uh, on that one will be provided uh, when this video goes to uh, to air. Thank you very much for your time.